Of course, when you find out you have a, a very serious illness, you're first very shocked. And um, it can be very overwhelming because you're not sure whether you're going to live, whether you're going to die, whether you're going to be able to survive. My biggest concern, my most, uh, my most anxiety was caused by the fact that I wasn't going to be alive to help my children growing up, and that I was really, really upset about that more than anything. I'm not afraid to die because and uh, they discovered that I had some kind of uh, sickness. At first, they thought I had um, idiopathic myelofibrosis, which is a hardening of the bone marrow so that the cells cannot be released. And they did a bone marrow biopsy and that was the diagnosis. But then um, a couple weeks later I started having major back pain in the, my lower back. And this is where the bone, the bones back here of your pelvis are generally where your blood cells are made. And that was where I was having pain. Uh, the pain got worse and worse to the point where I had to be on morphine and really heavy doses of painkillers and uh, they finally diagnosed leukemia, acute myelogenous leukemia is the name of the disease. And at the time, uh, we had no alternatives. Conventional medicine offers only one treatment for acute leukemia, and that is chemotherapy. I think that there are better ways, there, would be, there are better ways to treat people than conventional um, medicine. And I think that, uh, you know, that there is a combination of things that causes cancer. It's, it's diet, it's stress, it's our lifestyle in the United States, and it's, uh, you know, poisons in our environment, poisons in our food, and poisons in the air. And the poison is generally what causes cancer. The body can only um, manage a certain amount of poison. And once that liver becomes overwhelmed, then illness sets in. Uh, the way that the, the whole um, hospital scene does not make me happy. I hate going there. It's, uh, it's a very uh, clinical environment. Um, the food is terrible. Not very nutritious. The things that I normally eat are real food, you know, non-frozen food. And that's Gerson, uh, Max Gerson's, uh, what do you call it? Gerson therapy um, that he came up with was based on his study of people who uh, were sick. And actually he started on with himself. He started, you know, because he had migraine headaches when he was a medical student. And so he, he thought, well, I might, you know, be able to uh, fix this because he went to every doctor he could and none of them had a cure for the migraines. So he thought, well, maybe if I modify my diet, because he had read a couple books about diet and headaches, and he thought maybe that he could fix that. And he had read about a woman who had cured her migraines using a diet. So he decided to try this apple-only diet, where he ate apples, boiled, cooked uh, applesauce, um, raw apples. And he went on this diet for a week or so, and he realized his migraines slowed down, but when he went back to his normal diet, the migraines came back, and he realized that he could he could try this food diet to make his migraines go away. So he began adding foods to this diet, potatoes and other vegetables, and he eventually came up with a diet that he could eat where he wouldn't have the migraines. And eventually people heard about this, and other doctors would send him people to for him to explain the diet to them, and then they would try the diet. But the way he started using it for cancer was uh, one of the, a lady in Germany heard that he had um, used this successfully with tuberculosis patients. She came to him and she said, hey, I would like to try your diet. And she went ahead and tried it and she was cured. At that time, they really, um, after World, before World War II, they didn't have chemotherapy. After World War II, when he had come to the United States, uh, they had developed uh, chemotherapy because they realized that mustard gas in World War II veterans had killed off their blood cells and their bone marrow, and they realized that they could use this mustard gas to develop chemothera 
the chemotherapeutic drugs. Um, and so the chemotherapeutic drugs are based on the, the uh, chemistry of mustard gas and they are, use these drugs to kill off bone marrow and other rapidly dividing cells. So um, after World War II, chemotherapy became quite the norm, but um, what Max Gerson did is his therapy was not approved in the United States as a conventional cure. But when terminally ill patients became sick, they would send him the terminally ill patients that they had already tried to treat and that they had had no success with conventional medicine, and he was allowed to work with them. So he mostly worked with very terminally ill patients that had stage three or four cancers that were considered incurable by modern medicine. And he was able to, in a lot of cases, cure them or help them to live much longer. And so when I went for my next chemo, because of my diet, I had absolutely no side effects from the chemo. I had no nausea, uh, no feeling badly about it at all. It didn't make me tired. Um, I, other than being in the hospital, which is depressing,